All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below in the description so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO Gym. And the QBO Gym is a place where we have numerous hands-on exercises that simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Every month we come out with new exercises for you to practice and we break it down for you into four different sections. Today we're gonna to be working in the February year one cool down section. At the top here is an animated video to give you an understanding of what you, the bookkeeper, will be doing for Craig this month. He is our fictitious business owner. Further down is an interactive pre-assessment quiz. Below that are the exercises in this section. And after you have completed those exercises, there is an optional area where after you have done so, you can use some of our sample posts to use on your own LinkedIn to share with everybody what you have learned so far. So let's dive right in. Today we're going to practice reconciling Craig's bank accounts. Go ahead and click on that link. And when you do, the exercise will appear for you. I have it over here on the right-hand side. Let's read through the scenario. As a bookkeeper, your primary responsibility is to ensure that all financial transactions are correctly categorized and match the flow of money into and out of the bank. You have just received the monthly statement from Craig's bank. Now it's time to confirm that all the transactions have been correctly added to and categorized in QuickBooks Online. To complete this exercise, you need a copy of Craig's bank statement. Click the link beneath the cool down video to grab a copy. So up here at the top is the animated video. You will see this little button that says bank statement. Go ahead and click on that to download the bank statement. I have it pulled up right here. Once you download it and open it up, it should look just like this. You will need to be in the same session of the sample company that you did the previous exercise in. If you have not completed that exercise yet, go ahead and click on the link on the top right corner of your screen. That'll take you to that exercise, complete that one, and then come back to this one. Now let's go ahead and get started with the exercise. Be sure to have down, be sure to download a copy of Craig's bank statement once again found underneath that cool down video. So to get reconciling, we need to first click on accountant tools and then select reconcile. So here I am in the sample company. This specifically is the dashboard. At the top here is accountant tools. Go ahead and click on that. And then when you do, you can go ahead and click on reconcile. Now note that a couple, that the next, excuse me, note that the next couple of screens are only because you are reconciling for the first time in the sample company. In a real life scenario, after reconciling for the first time, you would go directly to the reconcile screen. So we want to click on the get started. Again, this is just information about this area. And then once again, one more pop-up, go ahead and click on let's get reconciled. We currently have it set as the checking account. This is what it's defaulted to, which is great. This is what we want it to be. We need to, in the ending balance field, enter the ending balance found on the sample bank statement. So here is the sample bank statement that ending balance is 382502. This is what we want to enter in here. So 382502 is what I believe I just said. $3,825.02, yes. In the um, ending date field, we're going to type a lowercase t for today's date. Now in a real life scenario, you would use the ending date that would be here on the bank statement. But because the sample company is always changing dates, we just leave it as today. Um, so there is not an actual date on here. We will just use today's date as the ending date. So type a lowercase t and it will automatically show up for today's date. And now we are ready to reconcile. So click on start reconciling the green button right here. Once you click on that, you will get to this reconciliation screen. Now you may get some pop-ups, um, just some information that QBO is trying to give you about this area. Just once you find, or once you see them, just go ahead and click out of them. Now, before moving on to reconciling, let's go ahead and take a minute to review what we are actually looking at on this screen. 
So the first thing here is this beginning balance, this $5,000 right here. This is the ending balance from the last time that you reconciled. It cannot be changed. It is set in stone. The statement ending balance right here, this is what we just entered on the previous screen. This is coming from the bank statement. Now, if for whatever reason you entered the wrong statement ending balance or you entered the wrong statement ending date, you could always click on this edit info button to go ahead and make the adjustment and change it. Next, you will see next to each uh, transaction is a circle. You see them all right here. This will have a blue check mark if the transaction has already been marked as cleared, kind of similar to what you do with processing the bank feeds. So if you click on this, it'll show as being cleared. Um, if it's unselected, obviously it's not. Now cleared means that we have matched what is on the bank statement here with the transaction here. Once you find the match and it's all correct, then you would click on the circle to get the blue check mark. Now, when a transaction has been checked, it is going to be added to the total uh, payments and, and or, I'm sorry, or deposits, not and, um, payments or deposits, depending on which one it actually is here. Now, the cleared balance, which you will see right here, this is the beginning balance right here minus the payments and deposits. That will equal the cleared balance here. Now the difference, this is right here. This is the statement ending balance right here minus the cleared balance. The ultimate goal here is to have this difference be zero. That means that everything is matching up properly and as a bookkeeper, it's very satisfying. So your ultimate goal here is to see a zero. Now one other thing to note here is that the transactions currently showing um, on this list here are only those dated on or before the statement ending date. You could always turn off this filter by clicking on the X right here next to statement ending date. And you may need to do this if you ever have transactions that were added with an incorrect date. These are often called um, hidden or rogue transactions. So if you're trying to find something and you can't, click out of this uh, filter right here so that you can look and see if maybe it was just an incorrectly added um, an incorrect date for that particular transaction. All right, so now that we've gone over what all of this <laughs> looks like and what this is all for, now we can go ahead and begin the reconciliation process. We're going to first uh, do that by finding and checking all of the deposits. So let's go ahead and click on the deposits tab. That is the middle one right now. Currently it is showing all payments and deposits. Let's look at just the deposits. Now the reason you may wanna do this as you're reconciling is based off of how the um, how the bank statement or how the bank statement is laid out here. So you can see all of these deposits that are showing here. They are separate from checks and the deposit and other debits. And so um, being able to click on this allows you to only show the deposits so you're not showing all and then like trying to jumble through and trying to find everything. So it just makes it a little bit easier as you, the bookkeeper, to um, get, do your reconciliation this way if your bank statement is laid out this particular way. So using the sample bank statement, we're going to find and check all of the matching deposits. So let's go ahead and get started here. This first one um, for, doesn't have any date. <laughs> this first one right here is a deposit check for $175. So we see one right here. I'm going to see if I can expand this a little bit. I did the wrong direction. There we go. Um, just because it's with my screen shortened, you're not able to see all of the information on my columns. So um, anyways, the first one was for $175. That is this one right here. Go ahead and click on that circle and, um, to get the check mark right there. The next deposit is for $86.40. That is this one right here. After that is another one, Kate Whalen for $225. Um, this says Kate, this is actually Kate Whalen. You can't see because of my um, because of my columns, but that is for Kate for $225. So go ahead and click on that circle as well. Another one for $105. That happens to be the next one right here. Uh, we have another one for $694. So let's go ahead and click on that one. That's the next one on this list. 
and then one final deposit for $337.50. Let's go ahead and click on that one right there. And that one is all done. Next, we will find and check all of the checks. Now to do that, we're going to click on the payments tab. So go ahead and do that. And don't worry about your work. It's not gonna get lost. It will be saved. This uh, tab here is just a condensed, easy way for us to filter out payments versus deposits. So we are in the payments tab now, but let's go ahead and narrow it down a little bit further by having only the checks show. We're going to click on the filter icon, which is right over here here. And then in the transaction type field, we are going to select checks. So go ahead and click on that uh, drop down there. Scroll down a tiny bit until you find check. Go ahead and click on that. And then we are going to click on the green apply button. Now you will only see the checks that are showing right here. It says type, it says CH, but this does say check. Um, so using the sample bank statement, we're going to find and check all of the che uh, cleared checks. So let's go back to the bank statement here. We have check number two for $18.08. .08. So let's go ahead and find that. Check number two, that's what this reference number field is for. Check number two for 1808, go ahead and click on that circle right there. Then we have check four for $54.55. Check number four, 54.55, go ahead and click on that. Then we have check number five for $62.01. So let's find that one. Here's check number five, 6201. And you'll notice here that we're doing this in a different order. It's not listed out the same way it was when we did the deposits and that's okay. Checks get cleared at different times. So the order doesn't matter as much as making sure that what is on the bank statement here is matching what is here in QuickBooks. So let's move on and do the last three right here. Check number 12 for $55. That one is right here. Then we have check number 70 for $185. So check 70 for 185 is right there. And then the last one is check 75 for 228.75. So check number 75 is right here, 228. This does say 228.75. So go ahead and click on the circle next to that one. And now we have completed uh, checking all of the checks. So finally, we will turn our attention to the remaining debits. First, we need to clear, uh, remove the check filter. So we're going to click on the X next to check. That is right over here on this left side. Click on that X. And now we will see only of the payments, but all of the payments now, um, the debits are going to show on this list. So once again, using the sample bank statement, we're going to find and check all of the remaining debits. So let's get started with this first one. We have a $300 debit for Robertson and Associates, and actually there's two here, one for 300 and one for 250. So let's go ahead and find those. Um, those actually happen to be right here on the top, 300 and 250. Go ahead and click on the checkbox next to each of those. I'm going to try to expand this just slightly so that we can get, there we go, so we can see all of the payment numbers right there. All right, so now we have the next one for $89.09 .09 for Tanya's Nursery. So go ahead and find that one. Here it is, um, an expense right there, $89.09 for Tanya's. Then we have a $250 one for Hicks Hardware. So 250, oh, there it is, Hicks for 250. Then we have 10809 for Tanya's Nursery. So 10809 is Tanya's right there. Then we have one for Squeaky Clean Car Wash for 1999. Um, there is one right here, Squeaky Clean. This is what it is for 1999. Now I will mention here that there are two in here for Squeaky Clean. Um, so you can just go ahead and click on the top one for the purposes of this exercise, it doesn't matter. But just know in a real life scenario that you would want to be very mindful of checking the one that has the correct date. Now, the um, 
It's really important to do that because, you know, if you have two that look like they're duplicates right here, it may be a duplicate or they may be legitimate transactions. Maybe it's just, you know, it's for a car wash. So a car wash probably costs the same amount every time Craig goes. So it just varies. Um, the, the amount is going to be the same, but the date may be different. So we don't have, because the sample company is always changing their dates, we do not have dates specifically here on the bank statement, but just know in a real life scenario, you would want to be very mindful to look at that date to make sure that the, you have selected the correct one. So let's continue on. We have done squeaky clean. So let's do the one for Bob's Burger Joint for $5.66. That happens to be right under here. Go ahead and click on that circle. We are getting closer. We are almost done. $52.14 from Chin's Gas and Oil. So 52.14, here it is right there for Chin's Gas and Oil. We have another one for Hall Properties for $900. So let's find that. That is right here for $900. And as a pause here, I know that there's another payment here for $900 that says MasterCard, not one we are going to click on, but um, just wanna make sure that you understand that when you are reconciling, it's really important to make sure that you are checking the payment amount and or deposit amount and the payee um, uh, or any kind of, um, whoever it is for or from, because you want to make sure that you are selecting and matching up the proper one. It can be very easy to just go through and look at for the numbers and you're just clicking the first one, but you want to make sure that you're also looking in this column and in some instances, the date column, like what we talked about for squeaky clean, um, just be very mindful that you are selecting the correct one. It's really, really, really important. So we have just a couple left, one for $215.66 for Hicks Hardware. So $215.66, here it is. Go ahead and select that one. And then we have one final one for Bob's Burger Joint for $3.86. So that one is right here. Go ahead and select that circle. And as soon as you we do, you will notice here that the difference has now become zero. So we have achieved the goal of what we wanted to do, matching everything on the bank statement to what is in QBO. You have a difference of zero, so everything is matching correctly. So congratulations, you got it done correctly. We're going to go ahead and click on the finish now button, which is right up here. And when you do, you will get this little pop up here um, saying that you've reconciled the account. Now, as a note here in a uh, real Q a QBO books, um, there would be an opportunity to attach the statement right here. Highly recommend it never hurts to have extra documentation, um, but that is where you would want to um, and that is where you would uh, attach it right there. The sample company doesn't offer this, so there is no button there. So you can go ahead and just click on the green done button. And that is it. You have now reconciled the checking account. And if you have any questions or want to know more about the QBO gym, just click on the link below in the description. Be sure to leave this session of the sample company open as you will need it for the last exercise in the cool down section where we practice running reports. And I will see you in the next